And how did you get into your YouTube channel? I think that's so, that's another thing. Uh, I think that's how we pretty much knew you and um, with some of the work you've done as well. Um, how did you get into that? Was that just something you just got really interested in or as you got better at sprinting, you just decided to start filming some videos and then realized you're putting on YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, really I've been, I think I've been making videos longer than I've been sprinting really. Uh, it's, uh, I've, al I've always loved like making videos. When I was little, I was making like little stupid videos on, uh, on, uh, yeah, like my cousin made a potato cannon and I was filming it and put it into Windows Movie Maker and put it in slow motion, even though it was like 10 frames per second. And it was like, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I've made like, uh, I have another channel where I have like a couple of gaming videos. I made like three gaming videos and thought maybe I should do this, but that I never got into that. And uh, I started making some like, do you know, aggressive inlines? Do you know what that is? Like roller yeah. skates where you yeah. like go on um, uh, grinds and stuff. <laughs> I did that for a while. <laughs> And yeah, I, tried... I thought that was more of an American thing, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I was like, uh, yeah, because I've always been watching YouTube and I found out about it through YouTube and uh, I started making, I made like two uh, aggressive inline videos uh, in 2012. And uh, so when I started doing athletics, uh, I got less and less time to make sort of videos. So in 2016, I started filming a bit of my uh, training and uh, stuff like that so just to get something to edit because uh, I really wanted to do more editing so I just started filming on training and then in 20 January of 2017 I made my first vlog and at that time I felt like really cringy doing it and it was like <laughs> weird because uh, I was t I was talking English and that's really like uh, I wasn't used to talking English on t on camera and uh, stuff like that so after a while I uh, in the middle of 2017 uh, I started talking Norwegian uh, instead but I found out that was just started getting more cringy <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why but uh, and then I found out that like if I want to reach out to more people I should talk English so in the end of 2017 I started talking English again in the videos and since that I've just been doing more and more videos because in 2018 i started like the road to 20 series and, yeah, yeah i've seen that and uh like in norwegian and put subtitles at the bottom in english yeah <laughs> two one stone what that yeah, where you kill two birds with one stone yeah it's very very time consuming consuming though so i would <laughs> probably just like never get to <laughs> put them do, out <laughs> do you never get um people just um ask you questions like oh can you put that in a french subtitle please or something like that <laughs> we, we get that a lot <laughs> oh actually yeah, you know. <laughs> last uh my last video was one guy asked me if i could speak some russian <laughs> <laughs> It's weird because people just assume we can just do these things and we're just gonna like we're not very very good in other languages you know it's something that i would love to be able to do you know just speak different languages while i'm speaking but yeah. obviously it doesn't work like that for everyone and it's quite hard mm. yeah you know well probably yeah if you grow a bit maybe you can hire like yeah, some translators <laughs> <laughs> that'll, that'll be that'll be good <laughs> One million, one million follow, um, subscribers, yeah. and, then, and then we'll do it. <laughs> I've got a question for you. So in 2018, you ran a 150, which was timed at 15.57. Yeah. Fortunately, it was ratified <laughs> as a record because the wind was not recorded. Yeah. When you, re when you heard that, how did that make you feel? Uh, it was really unexpected because... Uh, well, I have to tell you that the wind was, we had a lot of tailwind. Uh, oh. So, so, but it was like, when I heard it, it was like, what does this even mean? Cause I was like expecting to run 15, eight or something. Uh, so uh, yeah. And it was, I, I believe it was my season op opener as well. So, um, and my goal that year was to run, uh, I wanted to run like 2080 and qualify for the European champs. Uh, that didn't happen, but, 
yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I was I was just like sort of. The time was so fast that I I didn't like really know what to feel about it. <laughs> okay. And of course, it was a lot of tailwind, and we we didn't get the measurement and uh, stuff like that. Even though there was a lot of tailwind, did you still feel like you knew that you were running fast at that point in time? Yeah, I was feeling really fast. I think uh, I've never felt like that fast that early in the season. Uh, and uh, that season, I really ended up like chasing the European standard the whole season. And I ended up running a lot of 200 meters. Uh, yeah. And many of the competitions felt like, yeah, this was the competition. I felt like I was running sub 21, but uh, then we got like headwind and uh, and uh, suddenly one of the meets, everyone was running slow and it was like, yeah, what's what happened here? Uh, like uh, one guy, Jonathan Quarko, we were in the same race Whoa. and he, he hasn't run over 20, he hadn't run over 21 in like two and a half years. And suddenly he was running 21.10 or something. And it was, yeah, very weird. <laughs> so, so yeah, I, even though it was a lot of tailwind, uh, I know that I was in really good shape at the time. And you ha you still have to move your legs that fast. fast. So. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone is in the same boat. Like, everyone in that company is doing the same thing. Mm. So where where this season has been kind of cut short and championships aren't happening as of yet going forward um what are your like new goals and targets because obviously evidently you're missing out a year worth of athletics really yeah yeah so my my main goal this year was to be running the european championships in august so when that got cancelled, it was, uh, I really felt like, yeah, what is my goal? I did, re didn't really know what was supposed to be my goal this year then. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think going through the season, I'm just going to try to run good races, just try to work on running relaxed, because that is something I've been struggling with. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, just like get i think yeah just my goal is to get some good races in in summer in the end of summer and um try to stay consistent and maybe get a pb and then at, in september i i hope to uh defend my national title in the 200 so um uh, yeah it's just uh yeah the goals are a little bit different than they were but i think that the last years i've been underperforming uh at my peak so or i've had bad comp uh, conditions in my peak races so um i think i think in, i can still go for a pb this year even if it's not going to be the same competitions and yeah. uh, i think it can probably be a pretty exciting season anyways and cool. with with you defending your 200 meter national title in september when would you then take a break to then start back training uh, uh through through the summer um no so you, you you said you're competing in sorry i've got a ah! <laughs> 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 sorry so this is that's all going to be on camera <laughs> <laughs> basic so you're starting you're competing at the national champs in september yeah Obviously, your season's been cut short between March to, let's say, now. Mm. After that national champs, will you take a break where you don't train or are you just going to go straight through and prepare for your um, 2021 season? Uh, we'll see. I'll probably... I'll see how I feel after the national champs. Uh, usually, I'll, I'm not used to taking like a big break because usually I'll just like train easily for through september and maybe do some long jump uh yeah try like 200 hurdles uh oh, <laughs> do, do some... try try all the different sports that you can you never know <laughs> yeah do some weight lifting maybe but uh i'm not sure but this year uh yeah i'll, I'll see when it comes to it but usually we start up training 
uh, in the start of October. Um, so um, usually I just have maybe three weeks easy, but uh, if I'm motivated, I, I don't see any problem with just keeping on training.